Okay, welcome to the second half of our animal adaptations assignment. So you should have this paper in front of you. It looks like this. You probably put it inside your science journal. If you didn't, you could have printed another. There's nothing wrong with that. We're just continuing with our study of these animals. Remember, adaptations are um, things that God has given these animals so that they can survive in their habitat. Sometimes it helps them to camouflage or blend in, and other times it makes other animals confused and that they are not prey. All right, so our first animal today is the butterfly fish. He has a false eye on both sides of his body. This feature serves two purposes. This larger eye in the back, which is actually just a big black dot, makes other fish think he's a bigger fish. Bigger fish have bigger eyes, smaller fish have smaller eyes. The false eye located here um, tells, tells fish that if it, if it is attacked, it may get away if the predator attacks what he thinks is the head. So here, he's going to think that this is the head, but it's not. Also notice that its real eyes are concealed by a black stripe that go down its face. Okay. So, butterfly fish, move down, there we go, okay, this guy is the butterfly fish, and if you recall his adaptations, he has that black stripe over his real eye, and a large false eye at the back. Large false eye and eye strip. Okay. Let's move on to our next animal. Can you find the iguana? Can you see him? Many of its prey cannot. This lizard uses camouflage to blend into, into its surroundings while hunting his prey. He kind of looks like the leaves and the sticks around him. Do you agree? So here he is. The iguana. And let's write a little bit about him. He is well known for his camouflage. Well, you can hear Angie. She's yelling at me from the background. She's climbing on the table now. Let's put her back. Okay. And what I did was I chose a silly shape to kind of show how he is usually, uh-uh. No, she's going to jump on the railing. Not happening. Um, the same color as the leaves and the and the sticks surrounding him. Come here. Oh, here we go. Okay. See how long she stays. All right. So the iguana is our next one, and we can now talk about the kill deer. So the kill deer is actually a type of bird. This bird lays its eggs directly on gravel. Can you find the eggs in the, in the gravel picture? They use this as a type of camouflage. This is another important adaptation. If anything gets close to the young mother, the mother will appear injured by dragging her wing across the ground and limping. Predators will think she is injured and follow it, but the bird stays just one limping step ahead of the predator and she leads them away from her young. She will fake this until she is far enough away from the eggs and she can fly away to safety. Okay, so here is our kill deer and I'm gonna hide some eggs in the gravel. Okay, so this is the kill deer. And let's write down what she does. The eggs look like gravel and she pretends to be injured to lead away predators. Okay, so there we go. All right, now what about the leaf insect? This guy's a strange one. Small insects like this one are often a favored food for many animals. This insect protects itself by mimicking green leaf. You can even see the fake veins on its body. 
This insect eats other small insects, but the disguise is strictly defensive, protecting it from predators. So then I had fun with this one. I'm gonna put a leaf here and a leaf here, and then he's gone. All right, so this is a leaf insect. And the leaf insect mimics a leaf. All right. So if I, of course, if I, if I move too fast, you guys, I hope you're pausing or go back and watch again and pause as you keep going. Here are my completed for the those four animals. And you can see here that I have our killdeer, butterfly fish, our leaf insect, and our iguana camouflage. So I hope that you enjoyed your animal adaptations assignment, and I'll see you later.